night! It'll be a night of crazy radio cliches and all kinds of wacky stuff. Have you ever watched the Colbert Report where you turn it on and he goes, TONIGHT! And points at the audience every single fucking night for 3,522 episodes. Isn't that annoying and stupid? Well, I wouldn't know why anyone would, you know, actually do this like this. <gasps> Cue in here a little barrel, 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 barrel sound effect and... You know, I can't do this joke very long because... Everybody does this joke eventually. Ah, radio DJs, those idiots, ah, what do you think? Chris, I want to get your opinion first. We got three men on the cast tonight, but I want to get Chris on this first. What do you think about uh, that, that local man who toured with the sticks? Do you remember that guy? Oh, <laughs> Mr. Gare. Yeah, Mr. Gare. Did I tell you that? You told me about that. He seems like an old, dirty man. Why do you know about him? You told yeah. me about it. Do you like, know what he looks like or anything? Yeah, he's gross. We got an, a guy named Gare in town who uh, was a yeah. tour manager for Sticks for about six months. He's a radio DJ here. He was from Miami, and he developed a very serious cocaine problem. <laughs> and he went on a spiraling, out-of-control binge one time and was no longer manager of Sticks. Oh, by the way, we got special guest Daniel on the line. Hey, how's it going? Coming from the, the, the slums of Shaolin, Wu-Tang, my uh, favorite five album. Chambers. Five chambers. Five chambers. Only five. Um, you, yeah. Give me your take. Theme song. One take. Give me your um, out of ten rating for uh, our theme song. I'd, I'd, I'd give it a, I'll give it a nine. Only because, oh! only because um, I really like the the sea breeze one. And I'm uh, yeah, I, 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 I got to go with that. Oh yeah, I do too. Well, the the, the thing that happened there was before. Um, Chris made me realize that we could not do a variety show centerpiece that was entirely video for an hour. Yeah. Um, that we, was not just on my end. That, that was, was going to be... a mutual agreement. That was going to be... Yes, this is true. That was going to be the big main song for that. Uh -huh. But by that point, we'd already started using this for the, the podcast, this secondary thing. Yeah. So, so naturally, we didn't get a chance to use it. Aw. And it, I feel like it would be inappropriate to switch it up, but at the same time, I've, I know plenty of podcasts that do that. It sounds mm -hmm. fine. I think it's good. Mega64 changes theirs every, every week, week as a joke. But, but that's why we're going to do our song picks of the week. Actually, yeah. like, for the last six weeks or more, it's been that fucking um, Aquabat song. I'm alone in a horse suit. Oh, has <laughs> it been that recently? Yeah. That's an Aquabat song? Got yeah, my pistol at my side. I always wondered why they used that. And the guitar is really cool in that song. Yeah. Horseman. Yeah, I didn't know that's what that was. Holy horseman. That doesn't oh. sound anything like them. It doesn't. I had to look it up because I was just like, okay, who the fuck is doing this? It's I gotta like, be. When he talks about um, like his favorite albums, he's like, yeah, Aquabats and the Floating Eye of Death goes great <laughs> with my Power Rangers stop motion videos. Well, <laughs> I've talked about this before with you, Chris, but Daniel, mm -hmm. I don't like the Aquabats. What do you think? I don't think I've heard enough of them or about them or I guess I don't know. I yeah, remember the I, first I'm time the I'd heard I remember the first time I'd seen about them, I thought they were just like washed up like assholes. No offense to Aquabats. Because no I saw to assholes. The, I, yeah, or or assholes. No, I had offense. seen I had seen their poster for a tour that they were doing and they were gonna come to Houston apparently. Ooh. And I'm like, who are these jerks? Like, I see how the way they're dressed, and I didn't get that that's, like, their whole thing, and that they're yeah. actually respected. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I have like, a cult following, for sure. Yeah, and I'm, like, oh, who are these guys? And then some dude, I, this was at Insomnia. I, Chris knows Whoop. about this. Um, I go to a video game arcade called Insomnia, and um, some dude was just, like, he was just sitting there, like, mm. 
actually, they're a pretty respected band, and they're very good if you listen. To them. <laughs> and I'm just like, I just don't... Just like Papa Beef or whatever that thing was. Yeah. Well... Yeah, he was like... Well, he was like... Oh, mm, look at that! Mm, no, well, they're actually... If only we had video with, mm. with Mr. Daniel here. He's got his hipster glasses on, and it's beautiful. Check me. <laughs> are those actually are those prescription or are they readers? <laughs> They're my brothers, like prescription. Oh, I knew it. I knew it. when he said hipster glasses, I was like, "Those are your." I brothers. just like to say. I just like saying readers. <laughs> readers. I hate, like I hate when people refer to a fucking pair of glasses as readers. I like it Ew. when people refer to their underwear as whites. Did you just say you people? <laughs> whites. <laughs> my draws. My, <laughs> my draws. Well, um, that's an old Fresh Prince joke. My, my, okay, you guys do know who the Bat Commander is in real life, right? Yeah, yeah, the guy mm -hmm. with the, like, he, he blacks in his tooth, He's, right? He does, he yeah. He has a mustache. Thing. He does, like, all the music for Yo Gabba Gabba. That's right. And I, I thought it was he, the like, Wigglers or he something. He makes it or the something. Wigglers. Too. <laughs> it's the same thing. What was that? The Wiggles. The Wiggles. Wiggles. Yeah. The Wiggles. What happened to the Wiggles? <laughs> Wasn't, um, didn't, man. Dude, I'm gonna look them what? up. Did, did, um, do you know the guys from Homestar Runner? Matt and something Mike maybe Chapman. Yeah, they. I never. I they, don't know what that is. Hardly. You don't know what Homestar Runner is. It's a. It's an what? Old, it's like a Flash series. How? It's an old web show thing. Well, I. I I steer away from Flash shows of late. <laughs> I want. Well, yeah, me too. Ever since Homestuck just damaged <laughs> me. I want to say that the guys that made Homestar Runner went to Yo Gabba Gabba to be writers. Oh. Which sucks because I don't watch Toon Disney or whatever it's on. <laughs> Okay, so oh my god, these guys were huge. The Wiggles, <laughs> man, I haven't thought about them since I went to college almost. Before listen that, to, listen to this. The group for their farewell tour. First off, they had a farewell tour. Awesome. So did the Grateful Dead. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> it's like yeah, they're on. I that was level. grateful they were dead. Um, um Jerry visited, Garcia is visited eight countries and 141 city, cities for a total of almost 250 shows in over 200 days. For six hundred and forty thousand people. Oh my god! Wow. The so Wiggles. what they're really saying is, three thousand kids and like six thousand three hundred and mm. no, six thousand thirty-seven thousand. <laughs> these numbers. Something. These, <laughs> that's a great trick, actually, just because a bunch of pissed off adults. Oh that's, yeah, that's a great trick because obviously kids can't pay for it. So mm -hmm. if you have an insured kid audience, you know your audience will at least be double. Yeah, triple. That's, that's, that's the early ticket I never prices. thought that's about awesome. that. That's awesome. Yeah, that is. That's really clever. That's, uh, you know what? I think that's why people do kids' shows. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, yep. Yeah. It's easy money. Have I you mean. noticed how popular writing children's books is? Is it? Like, celebrities go into that all the time. Oh, God. I A couple of years ago, everyone kept sending me that fucking Samuel L. Jackson reading. Oh, the Did he do one? Sleep? Yeah. I, that was, like, funny once, but people wouldn't stop. <laughs> no, I mean, like, celebrities just writing children's books. Not That's, ironically. I've like, heard just, of it, but I haven't really they sell I don't know so any well. examples. That's strange. Somebody, I've never heard somebody of that. really big put one out recently. Well, I mean, if you heard Russell think, Brand was I putting out a children's been, book. I, I think it might have been John Oliver put one out. Oh, God. I'm still okay. on the fence on strange. him. Strange. Okay. I, like his show. I feel like I'm the only person that doesn't like John Oliver. Because oh, I don't know. I don't like him very much. Like, because the thing is, it's, um... I don't know. It's just everyone... Everyone likes him, and I don't want to be that guy that's like, eh, he's popular, I don't like him, but, God, um, I guess it's just, I see it, I'll, I'll let him, like, I'll go on the front page of Reddit or something, Or right? Facebook. And then oh. it shows up on Facebook. Um, it, what John face, Oliver said tonight will shock you! Yeah, it's, it's, everywhere, it's like, oh my god, I can't wait to see what John Oliver says about this. It's like, who, who, who cares? I, do, I haven't seen much, but the Edward Stone thing he did was pretty good. I, I have been seen completely... It out of this loop. I, I, I don't get on Facebook hardly ever well, anymore. Yeah, good. That's a good thing. It's degoutante. <laughs> it's pretty awful. It's just a bunch of, like, weird halfway memes. Posers! Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, where memes go to die, they say. <laughs> um, That's the new Game of Thrones promo, all memes must die. Oh, oh God. Imagine, really? imagine, imagine Oh, that. no! Imagine I said really! Sorry. Imagine actually sanctioned, like, Sanction Game, of memes. Game of Thrones memes. Like, Game of memes. Like, imagine the Game of Thrones, like... Like George RM put him out? <laughs> what, what? George RM. Oh, okay, yeah. I was like... 
Um, but yeah. No, no. Um, imagine just like official memes. Like imagine a company releasing a, a company oh. of that caliber, or like official memes are two words that should never. What if go they together. like entered them into a historical registry or something? Oh, it's in the National Film Registry in oh, DC, in like the Library of Congress. Hey, this is the meme section. What would the? It's just a big wax figure of George Double R M, and he's just like smiling. No, he's doing that. And like, it's a ledger. He's and doing that like Yao Ming face, the bitch please <laughs> one. Oh, oh. <laughs> I wish there was but, like what? every for the maintenance staff has to like spray him with like Thanksgiving feast odor and pesticides. Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> why would you have to scent? Why would you scent a wax sculpture to make it Thanksgiving theme? Is that like to make it more authentic? To make him seem like an old man? Oh my God, no! Wait, That's what? A what? No, a Gary Oldman? Why do old people smell like Thanksgiving dinner? Are you a cannibal? <laughs> always, they're always eating like turkey. <laughs> they're fucking cannibal. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> I'm feeling belligerent right now. I'm at that stage. Oh, oh man. Hey, man. hey, what kind of headphones are you sporting, D, D man? Well, I had to go with my old, um, really <laughs> long corded, um, like old Sony headphones that I don't use anymore. I just really like them because they're really, really long. We're but, using Sony headphones. But the oh, ones yeah. that I usually use are these uh, MDR V6s. Whoa! Ooh, high heavy end. duty. I love them. They're absolutely. I bet they got some pulse and bass. Hell yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah. Um, keep the podcast going for a second. I need to step real fast. Real oh, fast. We'll keep step. them. We'll keep them busy Take while the step. while the host oh, is out. Thankfully. All right. I'll be right back. When we. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I heard that, that was from great. here. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> It's really hot down here. We're subterranean, man. Oh, that's hot. <laughs> we got an album. Have you ever seen Office Space? Oh yes. Yeah. Everyone's seen Office Space, but yeah. mm-hmm. this where they put the the oh um what is his name? Why do I want to say Melvin? Stanley Yelnats or something? I want to. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's the character from Holes. I want to say Bubbles, Bubbles yeah, but they that's put, uh, Trailer Bubbles. Park yeah, Boys character. Yeah, no, I, that's a safe car in the back of the room. <laughs> but they're basically he the same character. <laughs> why, why do I want to say, like, Merlins or Melvin? Merlin! <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's like Melvin. It's not Melvin. It, uh, well, anyway, the name, it doesn't matter. But that guy was in Boardwalk Empire. His name... Steve, Steven God. Roots. Oh, yeah! Steven Roots' his name, but what's his... Uh, it was Milton. Lawnmower Man. Milton! Milton! Milton. There <laughs> we go! His name is Milton Waddams. <laughs> I forgot his Milton Waddams. The Waddams. <laughs> That's the best part of that movie to me. But, um... <laughs> Every when when they put him down in the basement, that's basically what we're dealing with here at RJ3K. We don't even get our checks half the time. <laughs> my fa- my my favorite part of the movie is is when like <laughs> they put him down in that fucking dungeon and then they, like what's his name um the fucking hair dude the boss the TPS reports. Oh uh, um fuck, what is it? oh god I don't know this better because he shares a name with another guy in it right. Yeah. Lumberg. 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 Yeah, um, he's like about to leave the room, and he stops and turns around, and is like, "I've been kind of having a, you know, a little, a little, a little roach, roach problem. problem. If you could just go ahead and take care of that." <laughs> and he just slams the door, and he's just in darkness. That's that's the best part of that that's movie. That's a great movie. Mike Judge really toned it down for that movie, but that was, oh, I like that movie. <laughs> oh, I love it. It's one of it's one of the few comedies I own. <laughs> Listen to you. Mr. High and Mighty, <laughs> Mr. Mr. I won't watch Ted Two. What a oh, joke! God. I don't like Paul Blart. Call Mop Two. What a bop! <laughs> Paul Bob, call Mom. I'm hurt. <laughs> call Mom. I'm it's hurt funny. too. It's <laughs> a very sensitive subject. I could nonsensically Cat mispronounce bat. mime slaps. <laughs> mime slaps. <laughs> Do you remember mime or, or boy? <laughs> Yeah, I got an email from someone whose username was Mime or Boy. <laughs> yeah, we, we did our, our little viewer mail segment and. Oh man, Mime or Boy. Mime or Boy. Okay, I want to get into some topics. Wait, we're not. Wait, 
Before Ooh. we do, I want to address you, something. Are you a mime or a boy? <laughs> I'm a mime. Man. I want to ask a question, actually. Maybe. Okay. And this is going to attract... Viewer uh, question of the week. <laughs> this is going to attract the person that y'all try to scare away. But I want that. Viewer mail of the week. What? Should Daniel die? <laughs> So so, what's up? What's up with the squishing guy? Oh. What's, Who? What's up with the squishing guy? The, the comment. Oh, I Squishman. thought I thought you were like talking about like a famous YouTuber named Squish. Squish. <laughs> <laughs> like I mean, you got PewDiePie for God's sake. Why wouldn't that be a possibility? Oh, oh, I'm Squish Smith. I'm here to squish. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm glad you reminded me of this because that was something I definitely wanted to. Um, I up. discovered that comment. I just got a text while I was at work, or something, or about to get off from Chris. I can read it. And I was just like, oh, God, what what the fuck? I just put that up. How did he find it already? Does, is there, like, some fucking freak that goes across the internet, like, every morning he makes his rounds to check out for new videos? Well, what's crazy is that guy had to find it. Like, he was just like... Man, I need some roach. I, I need some squishing fresh, videos. Like, in I, like I haven't gotten a new one in a while. I'm, I'm here for some I, fresh I squishes. See, it's like, wh how did he find it too? It's, it's, it didn't I, have. The, it, it's not like you labeled it roach squishing. What did here, you tag here. it? Okay, what I, I texted Jay at two in the morning. <laughs> a guy who has uploaded crush fetish and bug, bug killing videos commented on roach poachers, <laughs> daring us to put one in a grinder. God. Why? What is that? Why would I do that? Daniel, I, I would have commented on your comment already or replied, but, like, I just didn't know what to say. I still don't. The category <laughs> is gaming. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, whoops, that's gotta be edited. I it should have been how-to in style. I usually, yeah, I, I, I'm usually better about that, but Chris uploaded that, so. Well, no, I usually do that. I would have put that on, like, pets and, like, non-profit pets. activism. <laughs> pets! <laughs> <laughs> Oh my this god. This is my pet roach Raul. I really don't <laughs> I really don't know what to make of it. I know there's the fucking thing I said to you, there's rule 34 of the internet. Mhm. Mm but that's still that's so That was pretty out there. I'm not surprised by many fetishes because I've been on the internet for a long time. But, and he like he like crushing things. That's a common one actually. Yeah, there's some odd stuff that people like um i don't even know if that's a sexual thing how do we even him, how do we continue crusher. how do we continue after that let's let's not <laughs> yeah let's change the subject hey, you oh! got, wait, 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 who? Well, oh you got news for me oh. i've got all kinds of oh, stuff let's hear that news all right besides the best song title ever the nobility and dying light saved at 501 a.m while at work <laughs> um hardy's has been amping it up lately They've Carl's really, really amped up their annoying advertising campaign. Now, do they have Arby's in Texas, yeah. or is that the cutoff oh, of God, Carl's yeah. Jr.? Oh, it's all, uh, yeah. no, it's there's definitely an Arby's. And it's never been to one, and I'm and I'm and I'm sure it is the exact same quality that you expect from an Arby's over there. Wait, I mean Hardee's. Uh, they have Carl's. We Jr. have Carl's Jr. Okay, that's what I wanted to know. Well, we have Hardee's and mm -hmm. Hardy. Man, that's weird. That's just like a few states over. A couple. It is. Mm -hmm. Um. Well, Hardy's really started some annoying advertising campaigns, you know. Mm -hmm. They've got this fucking We've got the meats. Boom boom boom. I've seen that. No. Um uh, Carl's Jr has those. Yeah, it, they have the exact same ones. Horrible. And they did something else. I think we covered a story in like podcast 2 or something with like What was that fucking heinous burger that they conceived? That like that model was eating like every other commercial they have. Oh. It was like the the chicken skin it with had like hot dogs on it. It had hot dogs and oh. potato chips and on French it. fries. It oh, was God. it was just like hor completely horrible. Oh. But anyway, now as if in response, as of June twenty seventh, Wendy's has begun using the hashtag because Baconator. Oh fuck! What? On their Twitter account. I don't like. Uh, because, and I don't like when people put sentences without articles. That because was, America? Oh. Uh, can, can, can we get man, that trending? Because that, America? That's that's a doozy. Can we get America trending? We're, we're, gonna get, <laughs> we're actually going to get to this because I'm going to have a Nick Gripe segment. The first real <laughs> one. I, oh, man. There's so much to tell you about Nick, man. There, oh, God. 
He was okay, I first... thought you were talking about Nickelodeon, like the TV network. <laughs> yeah, I was I, like, what? How's that going to be a section? We were just watching All in the Family on Nick at Night. Um, <laughs> Bob Saget was looking. Uh, what's the annoying phrase? On point! Oh. Hey, Bob Saget is not in Family Matters. He's in the Cosby Show. He's not! You fucking dick. Phil House. Filled up house. Phil Houseman. <laughs> <laughs> Filled up house. But anyway, the, you know, this whole thing with the, you know, memes should not, pr like, bleed into our culture at all angles. Exactly. Uh, and like, it should not permeate, it should not permeate, like, mainstream commercialism. And I'm seeing it now, and soon memes are going to be so commonplace that people, the language will just be memes. <laughs> I, I think in 300 years... Everyone will just be communicating, and I can has cheeseburger, lol, okay. winky face, smile. I don't know. Okay, those aren't so, really memes, but okay. So this, I just remembered this, and this is gonna make it even worse for you because it was Wendy's. Wendy's actually has a meme commercial campaign. Yeah, I've seen that. Mm, mm, the red it's girl. called. It's called. It's like everyone. Oh yeah, Wendy's. Even the memer. And it's like <laughs> eats eats. What is it? Eat eats some murder, beef like a eats, boss. Yeah, oh! eats Wendy's jalapeno like a boss, and he's like, "No, oh, man, <laughs> oh, I, yeah. I, I, I can't believe I forgot that. I should have brought that up before I got into this. So that's there's even worse. There's that, and then Jesus. on top of that is a uh, flow on Progressive had oh. a like a meme she a commercial. Meme? She had a meme. God damn it. Gross. Yeah. Disgusting. Did you know that? Didn't Eric Wareheim date her? That's what you told me. Yeah. What? Why are you asking me now? What's her name? Like. Flo. Sludge tank slackens. Flo. Sludge chain. Flood of sludge. Give me a second. Um, give me a second. Um. This is. Okay, give me a second. Oh! Hey, um, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to sign off. All right. Well, everybody, that's been Daniel. We'll see him next time on. S Bye. In better, in better situations. Hi, adios. Adios. <laughs> <laughs> well, everyone, give a round of applause for Daniel. Yay. There, that was. I hope everything's okay. That was our old buddy. He looks to be having some. Some rough, tough issues. You, you should text him and see if he's gonna get shot. Um, all right. Now, now this is where headsets coming off, gloves come off. <laughs> all right. Did you hear about the unearthing of the Nintendo PlayStation? I only saw a little bit. Well, I was listening to the old Bomb Boys. <sighs> I missed that one. It's it came out on the seventh, so it's yeah, pretty. Very been, new. I was out of town. Well. Back in the day, Nintendo came to PlayStation and before they had gotten into consoles and said they wanted to do some kind of joint venture. And they signed off on it. But Sony wanted complete exclusive rights to distribution. They wanted to pay a one-time fee to Nintendo. And it would say Nintendo on this thing. Mm -hmm. And... It just fell through the whole deal, and like two hundred. What year was this? Early nineties, very early. This was um, before the PS One, basically. Okay, that's the era. Um, and so there were only about two hundred copies made, and Sony ordered like almost all of them destroyed, except someone. I think I think the story was they worked as a janitor or something at the company. And they gave a bunch to him to throw away or something. And he has unearthed, just recently, the Nintendo PlayStation. Or the PlayStation. Nintendo PlayStation. Sony's Nintendo PlayStation. Is it a disc? Like a disc drive? It is disc-based. Wow. And... You remember that old, like, abortion of a hardware add-on, the Nintendo 64 disc drive? Oh, God. That was, like, only released in Japan, I think. Ugh. Wasn't that, like, a double thing? Mm-hmm. It was, like, a stackable Ugh, thing, yeah. What a mess. What was that called, like, the double 64? Or? I think it was just the 64 disc drive. It had, like, it was, like, 64 DD, which is really inappropriate. Double D64. Yeah, exactly. Gee whiz. Dude unearths it, 
in like a box. <sighs> he doesn't have an, like an AV cord for it. But he's going to an electrical engineer and there are games with wow, it. There's wow. like two like what, blank what? discs that came with it that were... I don't That's know. That's crazy. I really and I'm looking forward to just imagining what comes out of that. this missing link that would have been so historically defining being launched. Mm-hmm. He, this guy is literally going to. Everyone's saying it's like alternate history. Yes. That's crazy. Everyone is saying sell this to an expert. Please just sell this to an expert. But he's gone to an electrical engineer he trusts, and they may fucking fry the thing. Because if you just stick any like AV cord into that, it could destroy it. So we'll see. But they estimated the value at two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Whoa, man! That doesn't seem like much, but video game stuff rarities they can pretty run pretty cheap. Price. Really? Well, I mean like, that's what, pretty what cheap you... compared to certain rarities like Bond's Aston Martin. That's a car. The original. Though. That's a car. Exactly. But since it's a small scale object, it could never be like. Yeah, but something so mainstream and huge that costs like they're charging like twenty million dollars for. Oh, okay. Well, yes. Relatively exactly. speaking to other memorabilia, mm-hmm. yeah. But like, I three or four hundred dollars for an original copy of Earthbound is not in my price range. I want to do that. Like after you go back, uh, wherever you're Earthbound? going. Earthbound. Yeah. One week. One of my I- friends is playing it, and he he has said it, it's incredible. I don't want an emulator either. I just want. I want to seriously order it for 300 bucks. Just one week, just say, fuck, don't buy a bunch of fucking beer and waste your money on get Earthbound. dumb shit and just get Earthbound. Because that's something that the window for actually getting that before it's gone forever is running out. Is it? Interesting. Well, well it's only it's so on, many copies. It's on the Wii, uh, like, online store. I'm talking the original But you want to buy cartridge, the cartridge. Because I'm a collector. and I would love to own that. That's why I hate cloud shit. Like, I love... Oh, I like physical stuff. I love yeah. physical stuff. If I had my choice, I'd own way more CDs and DVDs, but there's only so much money I can... F- I don't buy much of that stuff anymore. Did I ever tell you that my uh, my senior year, my parents... In high school. My parents would give me $5 every day for lunch, which is ridiculous. I wouldn't give my child shit, hardly. <laughs> fucking banana and a sack of Cheerios. Um, <laughs> that's a good meal. but um, That's healthy. I, they give me five bucks, and I just scrape up like a bunch of pennies for tax and go to Walmart on my lunch break and buy a $5 DVD every day. What? What'd you do for lunch? I just drive to Walmart and buy a DVD. But you didn't eat anything ever for lunch? No. I actually skipped lunch in high school. I all the time. used to often do that. Um, I, w- I went to Burger King a lot and got the Whopper Junior meal because it was five forty five exactly. After lunch, that. I think was a, th- I think it was fifty minutes for me in high school. And That's I, about what we had. I slept. I didn't go to the lunchroom. I just I took that time to sleep. We we were at the redeck table. <laughs> <laughs> me and Joseph and the gang, but uh, and Jeremy kind of floated. He was a. You moved in similar circles. You know how he is. He's friends with everybody. But yeah, um, that's true. So he's a schmoozer. But that that whole uh, I've gotten off topic. That whole thing with the the console is fascinating to me. Absolutely fascinating. Um, and I was I don't often find the news. I find the news that Giant Bomb comes up with often to be the most drab, like miserable developer talk because it really is, a, like for that. But this was really cool to me. So, let's see. I had some other new... I want to... I wanna, oh, there's something big coming. I mean, I'm talking like, this might take up a fourth of the podcast. All me. Oh, your story? All me, yeah. You want to go on your diatribe right now? This could be bad. I want to hear it. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kick back. Hold on. Let me start just... The gear grinding segment, and I will put that last. Is it? This is a. Uh, oh, you're gonna put your story last. Yeah. After all my complaints, I have three. Damn it! I wish Daniel could have stayed because I wanted to talk I about know. work things. I know. I wanted to talk about bad experiences at work. He's a good boy. Oh, this would be all for. This would be great if he was still here. But, so. I have had have. 
a friend who goes by the name of Nick. Never really talked at length about Nick on this channel. But basically, I met this guy in high school in 11th grade. We were in botany and zoology together. And he would come in... This was the period... This was, uh... Fifth period, and he would come. It was always after lunch. He would come in blazed out of his mind. He was he's a year older than me, and we would just talk about old like eighties movies. And he used to be so much fun. He was always happy go lucky. Just whatever, come what may. I'm open to any ideas. Ha just always jolly. And this is someone who smokes a lot of pot, so that makes made sense at the time. But then just every interaction became negative like he didn't he he started to just become insufferable and i don't care that i'm talking about this he'll never hear it and no one that he knows will ever hear it and i'm not going to be like fuck that guy but he actively seeks to prove people wrong to a fault for example if it's something is he a one upper like, no matter what you say, he's going to dispute it in some sense? Basically, that's what I mean, yeah. Fuck, man. I Always, know people like that, and I can't stand like, it. Okay, here's the thing. I'm not, not impressed by anything. Yeah. yeah. Well, about certain subjects, I'm a prude and act like an asshole about. But if I don't really, really know anything about it, nine times out of ten, I'm not going to bullshit. And he expects you to give, like... An entire like dissertation to prove your point. Well, that right? was the Wes Anderson thing. Oh, okay. But my point is, even when it's something he knows literally nothing about, he is always right. He can be talking to any type of expert, and he is always right. To the point that sometimes I wonder if he just wants to argue and disagree. But he gets upset and doesn't seem to enjoy it, so I don't think that's the case. Let me think of an example. Okay, like you were just saying. I, I explained to him, he knows I don't like Wes Ander Anderson movies. Okay, well, why? Why? Why don't you like them? I find them overrated, pretentious, and style over substance. What? Well, that's just your opinion. You've got to write a full dissertation on this. It's like, why can't I just like what I like and dislike what I dislike? And why is this, like, such can, an issue? You can have, like, a conversation about it. But why get mad at someone for not liking something? Something as polarizing as that, too. Like, not everybody likes that. And he'll do this thing where when you get to, like, a standstill in an hmm. argument... Does he change the outcome of it? Does he change the argument? No. I know someone that does that. He does this thing. Joe! No. Don't Joe! No, no. Down. Down. Joe! Down. Don't talk about that young man. Joe, I'm out for you. He's I'm coming for you. you. What's Joe, your arguments. Joe backwards. Shoy. Shoy. Joe. Shoy. Shoy. Nick will, for example, let's say, let's say I'm trying to explain why I like a certain chord progression in a song. Yeah, you know, I really like where, you know, this chord that's the seventh scale interval in the, the mode goes from a major to a minor that's referred to as a Picardy third what 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 why are you why are you trying to rip it open it just sounds good to me well Nick sometimes when I if I just say something simple like I don't like Wes Anderson you rip me open what what, what? fuck you but here's the real catch that really gets me the worst thing he does at the end of every, every argument that he can't seem to win well, it's just a matter of subjectivity. It's your opinion. Okay. What's, what's the issue? But what's the issue then, Nick? If I said that to you, you'd say no, 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 no. You don't get it. No. And it couldn't be the end. If if I say it's a matter of subjectivity, you're an asshole. You're just an asshole. You just don't want to fucking talk about. It. Fuck you. Like he's just okay. And here's the other thing that really gets me. If okay. So, I don't like Wes Anderson movies. He's like, yeah, fuck you. And then I like, mm, he wants to go see Ted 2. Oh. 
Oh, and he's like, hey, no. we, we really got to go shoot Ted, too. He has this... Basically, everything that I think is good and quality, for the most part, he dislikes on principle. Anything. I know someone like that. For, it's like, And I often wonder this about people. If like I recommend them music, if if they had found it themselves, they'd like it. But since I showed it to them, they're like, eh, it's okay. Because they didn't find it, and it's not special. And Nick... Sometimes like it pays like to be a little more personable. And that, yeah... Like, I wonder if he has, like, I know the, the DSM n- no longer refers to it as this, but I wonder if he has Asperger's or something. A big component of that is not understanding social cues and, like, beats of conversation of when things need to stop, and I I don't know. But he just, he's so confrontational a, for no reason. A big aspect of Asperger's is not knowing when to stop. You're right. It's mm-hmm. just a continuation on the same subject after it's already come to a conclusion. You've come to, like, a consensus agreement, but it's not over. And so. it's he's like the opposite of Joseph, where I always used to say, you know, don't just be, if you don't feel good, you can't just be a shithead to everyone you run by in public. You, you have to be a little nice. And he was always like, "Well, oh, that makes you fake." No, no, it's just how fucking just makes you not an asshole. Works, yeah. <laughs> I mean, and Nick, instead of getting awkward, just is angry. And he's like on the same spectrum, but different. And I just don't know. He's just he's painful. Okay, that was my gripe about <laughs> Nick. Um, here's a very quick gripe before I get to the big. one. Big one. This is a fat cast. Your big one is about work, right? Yes. Okay, before you start on your big one, I'm going to, you know, regale us. Uh, sure. Just a, a real quick tale. Sure. One of my last straw, like the straw that broke the camel's back at my work uh-huh. uh, like three years ago. This is petty and stupid. It really isn't. Mine was very stupid, but I had already had it up to, up to here. I hate, for example, when people say, oh yeah, I'll be ready in about five, ten minutes. How about we just say five or ten minutes? How about we just do that, please, please? Because when I hear, uh, yeah, you know, about you just give it a good 20, 30 minutes. Why don't you just say twenty or thirty? I hate it. I hate it, and I hear it everywhere. It just sounds wrong. Yeah, you know, a good five, ten minutes. It's like, is that a word? Five, ten. I think I usually say like five or ten or five to ten. Or you could just say five. I probably say five ten minutes you, all the time no, though. You, they could just say you know a good five, ten minutes. But they say a good five ten minutes. I hate it. I hate it. Meg sixty four does it. A million other podcasts. A million people I have to interact with on a daily basis. I can't stand it. That's just a little petty gripe. Now your work story. The the straw that. Broke the camel's back. Mic yourself good and close and be loud. Long ago. No, they're not loud. Long ago, when I was working manual labor in the confines of a burger shack, I was a fry cook. Were you really? A fry cook so lowly. I don't know what I thought you were. I thought you were like a dishwasher. I was minimum waging. It was tough. It was real tough. RJ3K has given us. I got... I got scars on my arms from the peanut oil, mm. the burning peanut oil. I had sweat stains down my back. Pause, pause, just a second. Remember what I told you about my dad when he worked at Arby's? No, go ahead. A whole fryer full of that hot shit all over his oh, legs. Oh, you did tell me about that, yeah. Third degree burns, in the hospital for a month, got infected, could have died. Is there a bug on you? No. <laughs> I was looking at the scars. But yeah. That dude, you ought to see that my dad's legs. Oh my god, it lo- is a ro- it looks like a fucking roadmap of Europe. Jesus, my uh, my uniform, man. Oh man, what they make you wear in those horribly hot environments? You're 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 slaving. I'm very familiar. You are slaving over hot. It's boiling bad, oil. No, I can't even fathom that though. I had to wear, you know, jeans. I had to tuck in my t-shirt, and I had to wear a hat. You and tucked in shirts is a funny thought. I hate me. tucked in shirts. Me too. It's it looks shitty. There's very few and situations then, where I like it. And then to top it off, to top it off, non-slip sneakers. 
Some sweet Velcro Skechers. Well, that's liability shit. Oh, yeah. But, man, I was already... I, I hated that jump. I hated it. It was miserable. You know, you, you get a you get a paycheck. Oh, you got one hundred twenty dollars. Great, thanks. That's not gonna pay for the ass with this plastic surgery I'm gonna need for the scars on my arms. Maybe you shouldn't have been fucking around with it. But <laughs> the one time, I didn't say anything at the time. But this is when I knew I was gonna quit. I had to find something else. I was cooking fries like I did. That was my job. It sucked. Frying it, it up. And I, I just cooked a new, like, a basket of them. And my manager goes, hey, man, you need to throw those out. And I was like, these? These fries? I just made these. And he's like, yeah, those. I throw those out. He goes, not the fries! I got written up for that. I got written up What'd you say for that. Him? Oh, I just said I'm sorry. No, no, no. You got, it was, it was a manager. manager. It was a manager. Was he, the, the top one? he had a different shirt than me. You should have gone to a higher manager and been like, "This dude is not being fair." Oh, I didn't care. Their management sucks. I, 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 I already wanted to quit. Managers typically hate each other and are always looking for a situation. Oh, they're in constant competition. That's other. true. So you should have gone to a more powerful one and then quit immediately. <laughs> I, I quit maybe a three was or four this, days uh, after. Fry bucket man. It was not fry my bucket man. man. Sleepy Fryman ended up later at a, my second job. He was one of my managers at this place. Ended up being one of Jay's managers. <laughs> like three years later, he was an okay manager. He just liked to touch. He the was girls. a little lethargic. He though. really liked to touch the girls a lot. See, I would not have thought that. Well, yeah, because there's a bunch of sweaty dudes back there. <laughs> he didn't strike me as a a diddler. Sexual. Oh, Ugh. that's what I had, man. I'm working, kidding. working in the restaurant slash fast food I business. I couldn't do that. You are you it. are an absolute grunt, and that's what Daniel's doing. Man, Ugh. I can't. He says he's gotten into the swing of things, but shit, it's tough. I worked one night as a dishwasher, and that made me want to kill myself really hard. Like really, really, really thought about it. Like that was the worst thing ever. Did you actually get the job, or were you paying off something? I was like? doing a fucked up under the table deal that my friend Joel in college worked me into. He could he wanted to go on a fucking anniversary date. And I wanted some money for, like, alcohol and stuff. And so he was like, if you cover my shift, you can keep the pay. And they'll pay you up front. And they did, but that's illegal. So. I And that ended if up If something had happened to you, they would have been fucked. I know. I and wish you, you would have come out on top. I wish I could have <laughs> been because that night ended very badly. I, um, had I ever tell you about that? You touched on it like a couple years back. I just, I worked the exact hours that they told me, or Joel told me I was going to be working, and I have never worked before. They didn't give me any heads up. It's 11 o'clock. All the dishes are clean. All right, I'm done. I'm going to go sit and wait for my ride because I didn't have my car at the time. And all the fucking other people who had been working who are now done sitting at the bar. This was like a little restaurant bar. One of them turns around to me, a really young one who was very attractive, which made it even more confusing, and was like, did you just quit working? While she's sitting at the bar after hours. And I said, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, um, Joel said I only had to work these hours. And the, the owner walks up from behind the bar and is like, you need to get back in there and clean up. And they wanted me to, like, mop up a bunch of shit and... You know, if that wasn't your friend, you could have just left because you have no binding, you know. She had already given me the money. Yeah. I don't know what. I, well, I didn't have a ride. I'm sure Joel. Oh. And that would have made it you really been chased awkward. Down. I'm sure Joel would have been fired, though, or, or severely punished. You know, he turned out to be a real backstabbing prick anyway, so uh, I wish he could had been. I wonder what the repercussions would have been if you had just been like, no. No, I'm not going to do that. It would have been a really awkward situation, but I would If you had your car, it would have been I would have respected myself a lot more. Yeah, yeah, because you're not bound to them. Then I had to get a ride home from a dude who had had six beers after hours and wouldn't let me drive, and I was just, like, clinching the sides of the car the whole time. Well, now here's the big boy. Is it time boy. for the big... The, the big, big boy. The big daddy firecracker. I'm going to try to keep this the uh, as quick as possible. Because no, 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 fill it, fill it in. It requires so much setup and background. That's perfectly fine. I want to hear it all. All right. Um, 
My second job. Fucking grocery store stalker. Bullshit. But I do it overnight and the managers don't bother me. So that's nice. No customers. Great. Sometimes in the morning, if we're running a little late cleaning up or something, you start to see the other departments, um, you know, drizzling in slowly. You know, frozen food, receiving, all the typical grocery store uh, departments. And there was this guy. I won't. I could say his name, but there's just no point. I will refer to him as Frozen Food Lead. A lead is separate from a manager. Leads do not have the authority to write you up. He's like your team leader. Pretty much. Yeah. He's just a glorified my position. Yeah. Um, even though he's in another department. And, you know, I'd, every no, you know, staying there late sometimes, I got to know this guy. He's a young, white dude, very good-looking, thin, early 30s, ex-Navy, uh, but a really nice guy. He's always been nice, always went out of his way to talk to me. He'd walk by me sometimes and pat me on the shoulder as I dragged out a giant pallet that was horrible. And I was drenched in sweat and would say, hang in there, buddy, and just stuff like that, and like, you know, on inventory days, all the departments would have to work together. And so we get to know each other a little better because we'd be working a whole shift side by side, basically. And, you know, we'd go outside and take cigarette breaks together. I'd bump some off him. He'd bump some off me. And we, we would have heart to hearts and stuff. But the bottom line is he always treated me like an equal, a complete, just like anyone else in my position. And that's how all the leads have always been. So it is... The 4th of July. That was, I believe, what date was the 4th of July? The that fourth. was, uh, it was a Friday. I went out on a Friday, and naturally, since the, the truck that would be coming in Friday, naturally, that would be a huge one to recover the store being ransacked for 4th of July stuff. So it was huge and ungodly. Normally, we finish trucks and cl are cleaned up by about 4 or 5 a.m. We were wrapping up the truck around 9.30 a.m. Yeah. Good hours, but... Uh, oh, man. Everybody knew we were going to be there for a long time, and we'd already accepted it. So it was bad, but it wasn't the worst thing do in the you, world. Do you get any pay increase for that, or do you just get the extra two hours? Only leads so get, like, get time that. and a half. Leads get time and a half. Fuck, man. Um, we just wow, continue glad, our regular aren't pay. Aren't you happy you got that extra fourteen dollars? <sighs> no, <laughs> especially what God, I, after what happened at the end of the story, or just the middle. I don't know when it's coming. <laughs> Look out! So it's that day. It's nine thirty, and we have to face the store. Conditioning, blocking, fronting—it's all the same thing. You pull everything to the very edge of the shelf at least two rows deep. You face it all up. Make it look good so the some tottering old lady doesn't miss a product that's pushed all the way to the back or something. It's mostly a futile endeavor, but we have to do it. So we have a pretty big store for this, actually, city. And we started on aisle one and worked all the way to 15. 15 has a small, maybe six-foot section toward the front of the store of, you know, fry base, you know, chicken fry, uh, fish fry mixes, packets, you know, salad crumbs and bullshit, and then there's a long stretch of bread, and then there's jam and peanut butter, and then a few, like, general merchandise items, like coffee makers. So, we always opt on nights that we're running really late on blocking or something to do it as a unit because when you put four people on every aisle and you don't leave that aisle until everything is blocked when you get to a big aisle like our entirely canned food and salad dressing aisle which is divided and split into four massive quadrants even if you're not really going that faster 
it feels like you're going faster because if you were just set on that aisle alone, you'd spend an hour and a half on it. But because you have four people on it, it feels like it's going quick. Now, when you get down to smaller aisles, like 15, whoops, which did not have much on it, it's kind of inappropriate because it's like, wow, you've got four people on this aisle. Shouldn't like one of you be here and other people are doing something else productive? Well, we had virtually finished, we'd finished virtually everything at this point. So we were just like, let's just do whatever it takes to get out of here sooner. Everyone pile onto this aisle. So the lead was even blocking with us, but he tapered off after 14 because 14 is a cereal aisle and it had an end cap that didn't have something on it or something. And so it was me and the two other stalkers that were on that night. So we're on the six foot stretch of. Are we about to get into the meat of the story? Yes. Okay. We're on. No, I'm going to meander for another hour. All right. Um, we were on the six foot stretch of chicken fry and st- fish fry shit. <sighs> and me and the dude, my. So there were three people. One person went down to the end to get the peanut butter and jam, while for some reason two of us, including me, were blocking this fish fry area. And. You know, we were kind of going a little slower than we should have. We might have been cracking some jokes back and forth. Hey, but hey, we just had a hellish night. It's like 10.45 in the morning. This is our last aisle. We have literally nothing in front of us to do. So why are we rushing this aisle, you know? So we were going a little slow. And first I started the story off with frozen food lead. Right, right. He, uh... He's he's very close. He's opposite where we are because the juice section is against the far wall, which is opposite this last aisle, 15. He's over there stocking some orange juice or something, and he turns around unprovoked and goes, this guy who's always been just so casual with me, like a friend. This is the Navy guy? Yeah. Oh, what? Okay. Always been the most casual, encouraging, nice guy. You know, the guy who's always like, you know, I've been where you're at, buddy. It gets better, all that. Turns around what you're and go- about to tell me is soul crushing. Turns around and goes, you know, you guys really need to stop goofing around. You're sitting here joking back and forth. You've got three people on the smallest aisle in the store. It's a waste of, of energy. You guys need to, to, to tighten up. That's the thing that they annoyingly say at my store when they mean pick up the, the pace or something. And so I turn around and I'm like, whoa. Who is this person? And I say, oh, dude, you all right? You know, we're, we don't have anything else to do. Um, all right, man, we'll split up. Or no, I said, I'm just doing what my lead told me to do. And this dude points to himself like he's stabbing his chest and says, well, you know what? I'm a lead, too. And I can write you up for insubordination. This is not the Navy. And... At which point I said, all right, man. And I just, we tapered off. So eventually our lead, stock lead, makes his way back to the back room after dealing with that end cap he tapered off to deal with and says, Jay, what did you say to Cody? And I said, I I didn't say anything. I just, he said we were goofing off, which was uncharacteristic. And I, I, we left and did what he said. And he said, Well, this guy thinks you said yes, ma'am, to him. (laughs) What? And I said, what? What, 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 what? Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. This is wrong on several levels. (laughs) I said to myself, first of all, I didn't say that. Second of all, if I was trying to be disrespectful, it wouldn't be You would have been a little more creative than that. That's like calling someone a duty head or something to say yes, ma'am. All right, you big meanie. That's so elementary and stupid. You got cooties. You know, I mean, Jesus. So I had to say to myself, oh, fuck. Well, now now I have to go clear this up because this is ridiculous and we're all men here. We've got to, we can't have dissent in the ranks. So I go, I go over to this dude who's also back in the back room now and I'm like, hey, Look, man, I, I, I didn't say yes, ma'am. I really didn't mean any, disres- any disrespect. And he looks me square in the eye for like three or four seconds and says, get out of my sight. What the fuck? Whoa. Now, man, that is horrible to hear that from someone you liked. Now, look. 
Jesus, dude, that really like hurts. Look, me. I understand that people have bad days. They don't feel good. They're just in a bad mood. But I'm all of the above frequently. And people I know and have been nice to and have a rapport with, I have always been nice no matter how fucking shitty I feel. I might be like, oh, man, dude, I feel horrible. I don't... But I'm not going to fucking take it out on other people I've been nice to previously. Like, really nice. Yeah, especially if someone comes forward to face-to-face -to -face apologize to you. Mm -hmm. You might agree to disagree, but, man, that's that's really harsh. That's low. That. That's, like, well, that's personal. Very immature. So, wow. I start trying to piece this together in my head. It's like, what the fuck could possibly be going on to elicit such a reaction from this guy? And, you know, it's like, continuing on that there's so many things wrong here. We were joking back and forth to ourselves. I said before, we were unprovoked. He had to go out of his way to mess with us. He was looking for something to get mad yeah. at, maybe, yeah. Yeah! Like, he, he just he was looking for the straw to break his back, so, you know. My older cousin, who... I, he also works there. He works in the produce department, was there. And he he's a gossip hound. So I said to myself, okay, this is the first place I gotta go. A... In case this dude, this frozen food lead, is going to try to spread bullshit about me and solely my name. B, to see if I can get anything out of him about this guy, because he, he's connected to all the departments, because he's just such a hound like that. Anyway, I, I go to him and explain the story, and he's just like, what? He did that? And he said, well, you know, lately he's been acting really strange. He's been pretty erratic and, and angry, kind of having bursts, you know, just fits every now and then. But that's still r grossly out of character and doesn't seem like him, even with everything else in mind. I said, yeah, it's, it's, it's just really bizarre. And look, if this was somebody I didn't give a shit about, who I didn't feel like I had had a degree of camaraderie with, it 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 wouldn't have been hardly anything because there shitty people are everywhere, but the fact that it was this dude, it was like haunting. It was so haunting. It's like a personal attack. Yeah. So I come to learn it was like a betrayal. I come to learn that this dude very recently had filed for a position that our service lead was just given, like some big position, and he didn't get it obviously. And ever since then, but that was like a week ago well prior to this incident and i was just like i can't make heads or tails of this so there's a cap to the story well it, you know everyone's basically on my side in this situation everybody is like what the fuck i went over a million things in my head what can i do to get this prick back because he really slighted me or at least make some kind of amends yeah um we use there's something called backstock when you when you get a new item you open it up and all of it doesn't go out to the shelf from the box you got three things left it's backstock you mark the upc from the shelf and put it on the side over time well basically how the store works when you buy something it extracts that from our inventory and then orders but we have a new system where we enter the backstock numbers that are written on the boxes into the computer and before it orders something new it'll say hey you got this go work this so we don't get something on top of the back stock because then we have more back stock so i wanted that's across all departments i wanted to go back to his frozen food department and scratch out with sharpie all of his codes all the millions of boxes so that when he got his next pick list he he couldn't decipher what anything was and it would be an unbelievably hellish experience. But I'd be on camera in proximity to the incident, and it's just not worth it anyway. I'd lose my job probably. But the funny part about all of this is yesterday, a crazed older woman came into the store. 
went to our store director and said, I don't have any money and I'm starving to death. Oh. And That's what you get for working on that side of town. This is just some random woman. So I, it, it could have happened anywhere, I think. But So the store director, out of the goodness of his heart, gives her $20. And this is a cold, hard man. That's all I've ever known him as. And I'm like, wow. So apparently she goes to the back and immediately steals $35 worth of shrimp and stuffs it into her purse. What? Why? What? Shrimp of all things. Let's go to the, yeah, the something top shelf that, thing. That's involved. Like You you have to be Somebody, really involved in cooking someone that. Someone just gave her $20 for nothing to get food and she steals a bunch of fucking shrimp. So she comes back to the front and our store director has been watching her on the closed circuit cameras. Confronts her and she starts attacking him, slapping the hell out of him, throwing things, including bread and other like candy up front at the register. You witness this? No, I'm overnight. Oh, you, this, this is, is what you heard. Day. And so they're just trying to get her out of the store. One of the service leads, this poor old woman, is just goes up to her and grabs her by the arm, and is like, "Just leave. If you just leave, we won't arrest you. Just leave." And she will not leave. She goes to the bakery and starts hurling cakes. At the bakery lead. I shit you not. And so, old frozen food lead decides to come up front. Here's all the commotion. Is this prior to your this thing? Is after. Oh, okay. She clocks him twice, square in the jaw. Hard. I saw the dude. Fucked up bruises. He had one on the eye, too. Messed up. All I can say. Karma. Karma. What do you think? You still never figured out why that happened, though? Why he was an asshole to you? Didn't get a job. Bad mood. People just... I, I talked to my lead about it, and he was just like, Oh, yeah, he's just a bitch. Dude's a bitch. No, I mean... Yeah, but not getting a job... Well, you're definitely not going to get it now if you treat your... Just hated his like job. Shit. It was early in the morning. It was the 4th of July. But none of these things excuse it. It is a mystery. Well, yeah, exactly. Like if I, had, if I had slighted someone in that way and they came back and apologized, where really I should have been apologizing, I would have been like, "Yeah, man, I'm sorry. It's early. I, I didn't mean, you know, whatever." He's got something. Something. Something's in his craw. I was gonna say that. The only something thing I've ever skin, done before sure. that could have been antagonistic toward him, once. Maybe six months ago. No, there's no way. No way. I left some. What I do is I, I buy drinks in the store before I go to work that are like, like they don't put them in refrigerators, like the Starbucks drinks or something, and I stick them in his refrigerator. He he, he works dairy and frozen, and um, sometimes I forget them. And if people come to do the audit and discover back stock or like stuff that isn't back stock in the back stock area. Then he can get ridden up, but that happened once six months ago. And no he's way, been nice to me, no. great sense. So everyone just tells me he's just an asshole now. He's just changed. Maybe something in his personal life happened that you just he won't divulge. All I hope is—is is he that married or anything? Do I you don't know? know. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't strike me as the type. You can you, very bachelorish. You'll pro you'll probably never know what what his deal is. All I can hope though is that his life is a living misery. It's what he deserves after this. Woo. I'm very... Look, if someone walks by me on the street and fucking trips me and says, Eat shit, cocksucker! I won't... I will forget <laughs> that Jesus. in a week. But when it's someone, No, I would never forget when that. It's, I would tell when, everybody. Look, when it's someone who I know personally and has been nice to me, it is a betrayal that I will never forget. And I hope his life, seriously, is a living hell. Oh, man... I hope everything in his life is a nightmare from the, for a hundred years from now. Every day is hell. No one fucks with me and puts me in a situation where I can't do shit. No! Only a real manager will I accept that. Did I tell you about, um, I think, God, it was a long time ago. I think I was maybe in going into eighth or ninth grade. Jeez. Um, my dad and I went to New York. His, he's from there, so, you know. Doesn't we, strike me as the type. He's not a very New York guy. He's been living, you know, around here for a long time. Oh, he's so. gentrified. Very much. 
Oh, so so we go back every once in a while, and so we decided to go to a Yankees game. It was like the last game they had at their old stadium. You know, it's it's a landmark. It's a historic monument almost that they right. tore down. Um, but we were on the subway like you do in New York. Like you do in New York. And uh, it was a Yankees-Mets game. So on cross, the old sub going to the old Met. Cross-town rivalry. And my dad is like... Kind of a fair weathered Yankees fan. If they're if they're doing if they're doing well, you know, yeah, let's pay attention to them. But um, you know, I was pretty young. I mean, I I had already heard the f word. Mm. But uh, these uh, rabble rousers behind us, they were Mets fans. They just kept screaming "fuck the Yankees" over and over for about five minutes straight. And my dad, I could see just like seething. Yes, and like Mountain you could rage. see him like almost shaking, and he goes, "Dad, shut up!" <laughs> and we just hear like a lot of the Yankees fans on the subway start like clapping and cheering. I swear to God, the guy that was yelling throws up immediately. Wait, wait, wait! Did he? Did you, and he just retreats. Did your father like yell this at the person? Yeah, he tu- like, he turned around. I picture him just like staring straight forward, and the other dudes like on the end of the subway, just shut up! No, he turned around and yelled at him. Ooh. And there was just like a crescendo of like applause, and then oh. a just. Ugh! This man threw up so much in the subway and just retreated. Like he had he was conceded. Done. Like that was it. He went back to his hiding. That hole. was all it took. His lair. That was it. He went back to Flushing, the land of the Mets. <laughs> what a strange story. How did we get to that? How did we get to that? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like this was somehow going to, like, I was sitting here waiting. Is this going to, like, sync up to my it story? Almost it does. doesn't matter, but I was just like, is there any logic for, like, five minutes? <laughs> it's just... A, a just com- irritating uh, weird yes, shit. Exactly. Ex- exactly. Anomalies. Well, well, you said eat shit, cocksucker. Oh. That thing. That's what it reminded me of. But man, that was just that's bizarre. But so is so is this. This is just. And now every time I see the dude, it's like, God damn it. Yeah. God to damn to, it. to uh, think you're like kind of buddy buddy with someone, and then all of a sudden think, oh shit. And now I don't want to walk by him because he might like mess with me. I don't yeah. think he mess with me, but it's like. Walking by someone you have, like, all these feelings about that are awkward, it's just, like, the most tense thing imaginable, depending on the type of person you are. I mean, I'm, I'm like that. Ugh. But just... God! That... that I get... I don't get genuinely mad about many things. Like, okay, let's say I'm, I'm, I'm griping about, like, you know, a meme or something. It's not, like, really to the heart. Like, personal. It's like, God, fuck that. That's annoying. You know, skimming by. But this kind of stuff, when it's really... It really eats at your soul, well, doesn't it? you know it? how I burn bridges, so you ought to know that that yes, comes from somewhere. Yep, yep. I have a bad thing about betrayal. Very bad. I am not good for that. And that's going to mean that my life is going to be really hard. <laughs> Woo! Okay. We want to give our music picks of the week. We don't want to be without that. Yeah, go ahead. I like this bit. Um... This week, I got something that I'm going to recommend that I already played for you once. You said it was relaxing. Um, actually, go ahead with yours first. Okay. Um, mine for this week, we're, we're going to do one each since Daniel has one. Um, mine for this week, I'm pretty sure you're familiar with, is The Drifters Up on the Roof. Ah. Uh. When this Starts getting me down And people are just too much For me to face I climb way up To the top of the stairs And all my cares Just drift right into space On the roof is peaceful as can be That's song. one of my favorite songs ever. One of my favorites, easily. So do you want me to do Daniels too? Since he Yeah, go ahead and do air. Daniels. He one second, let me pull it up. He has his song of the week is 
a Mad Villain song, which is um, MF Doom and the producer Mad Lib. And his song of the week is Operation Lifesaver by Mad Villain. Now, it caught me off guard. I went to breathe out, but then she made me cough hard. <coughs> Contact the guard and let him know to slip to him. Fine, and how are you doing? Can I get you a drink? This one's a shoe one. Awkward situation that I'm on a mission to ruin. Her big button smile was like camo. Hit up the men's room, we need more ammo. Watch at 3 o'clock, a new recruit. That's her gin and juicy juice. Use this stick of juicy fruit. She just knew she was cute. It's in her own best interest, it's less stress Hit her with the do you need a mid test It don't matter if she's slim or dressed To impress, I won't rest Fellas don't fess Some of them just need to eat the whole thing of crest That's a really interesting album The The producer has a lot of great beats And really well produced So check that out if you haven't ever heard of MF Doom He has a collaboration with Mad Lib called Mad Villainy And my pick the most important recommendation, obviously, of any of us. I yeah. mean, just I'm, I'm definitely got to be the best. I played this song for you a couple of weeks ago. This is a little song called "Beachcomber" by a band called Real Estate. It's about it's a song about losing someone losing their Rolex in the beach sands and trying to find it. Until that song. It's a little more, I say this almost every time I'm, almost every day I see you, um, it's a little, a little too indie pop, the rest of their stuff, but man, this song You is, like this song a lot? This song is perfect. All right. This is a great song. So, check out Real Estate, Beachcomber. Did you have anything else? I, no, I think, I think we can wrap it up. Thanks for listening. Good night. Wake up, Jeff. Everybody's wiggling. Wake up, Jeff. We really need you. Wake up, Jeff. You're missing all the fun now. Wake up, Jeff, before the day's through. What's that sound? I can hear somebody snoring. What's that sound? It's not Murray or Greg.